Hello and welcome to this edition of Radio Free HPC. This is where we talk about supercomputing, high performance computing, and other technology topics. I'm your Toastmaster, Rich Breckner, with my co hosts, Dan Olds and Shaheen Khan from Orion X, and Henry Newman from Seagate Government Solutions. Now let's get to the show. Hooray! Welcome back to. Radio Free HPC, Rich Breckner here, with my co-hosts, Dan, Henry, and Shaheen. Guys, welcome back. We've got a full crew for a long, first time in a long time. Yeah, it's that busy, busy event season, and Henry's got his vacations and his deep sea dives and all kinds of things going on, but we're back this week, and... and yeah, we are. And, and Dan, we're here to talk about your recent trip to China, to Wuxi. Yeah, Wuxi. Wuxi. The ASC 17 competition. Dan, how big a town is this, Wuxi? Uh, it's a modest-sized town of 6.3 million. Mm. <laughs> a lot of skyscrapers. Yeah. Oh, huge numbers of apartments. Uh, mm-hmm. Modest by Chinese standards. Just a small little town uh, about two hours north of Shanghai. Hamlet. Really a hamlet. It's a hamlet. Yeah, really. It's, oh. a, it's a hamlet. <laughs> now, this is also the home of the Sunway... Tahu Light uh, supercomputer, the number one system in the world, is it not? Dan? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yes, it is, and the students uh, had some experience with it. They got to go on it and use you it? They got to go on it, yeah. Oh, wow, nice. Did you see it in person, Dan? Did you look through the window? I saw the window? I looked through the window. That's about all they'd let us do. <laughs> okay. I don't think they even let us take, they even let us, let us take pictures either. <laughs> Okay. But there's pictures on the web. If you want to see it, go right. look at it. It's yeah. a bunch of racks. Well, we'll, we'll add some. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so this was a, a big size competition. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was 20, 20 teams. Huge competition. Mm. Biggest one the world has ever seen. Now, uh, Dan, are the rules the same in terms of power, how much power yes. they're allowed, everything? Yes. So who writes those rules? Uh, it's been kind of put together recently. The competitions have standardized the rules, at least when it comes to power. Mm. So they're all using the same 3,000 watts. They're all monitoring it pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, checking it out, you know, every second or less. Yeah. So the rules are pretty standard. Well, well, Dan, it seemed like the hardware was kind of homogenous this year. Did I get that wrong? It sounded like they're all using well, the same vendor's stuff. Yeah, they're all. This is the one competition uh, that is sponsored by a single vendor, which mm. is Inspur. Okay. And so the kids had a menu of Inspur parts that they could use. They all use the same uh, 14 um, uh, core Intel Xeon. I think it's a, it's a 2600 something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you see, there's a lot of variability. We went from four nodes up to 10 nodes. Mm. Mm. But the average count of nodes are coming down, which I think is due to accelerators. So then, at first glance, it looks like whoever has the most GPUs wins. Is that the case? Nuh-uh. Uh, All right. So it's more in interesting case, than that. In this case, whoever had the most GPUs, the team with the most GPUs at 10, uh, they won WinPack and HPCG, but they did not win the competition. Ah, interesting. So there's more twists to it. There's and I have one other twist. question. Sure. Uh, because it's called Asian Supercomputing Student Cluster competition are, are the teams only from asia or other parts no, of the world no it's it's open to the globe now and it has been for the last couple of years they're predominantly asian but if you take a look in there you'll see university of warsaw your raw university uh team from hungary um okay it's it's all over the map there are some western teams in there just no u.s teams this time Cool, cool. But there's no exotic so, uh, exotic architectures, no ARM or... Uh, no, other no this is straight Xeon. Interesting. This is, again, it's all supplied by um, by Inspur. So it's out of their, whatever they have. So this is really, you're baselining the hardware and every, the, this is really a competition about how good the students are. How good the students are at picking the hardware and picking the right number of nodes. Again, we're varying from four up to ten hmm. and how good they are at tuning yeah let's get on the third slide the linpack results uh there was a new a new world record linpack set there at 31.7 
versus the old record of 31.4 te uh, teraflops. Uh, so it's a, a marginal increase. The thing that's really cool about this, a great story, is Weifang University. They are not ranked in the top 500 universities in China. They're kind of a city college. Yeah. Oh. And they came out of nowhere, out of nowhere to do this, uh, to, to nail the top Linpack and as you'll see, the top HPCG as well. And uh, they beat, you know, teams like uh, Shanghai, which are power teams, Tsinghua, which is like the Harvard of Harvard slash MIT of China and some others. And look at number two, University of Warsaw, another oh. new team. Yeah. Came yeah. out of nowhere to nab that. Now, is that with the Tesla P100s, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. these numbers? Because they're... Yes, yeah. 10 of them. Yeah. For Weifang, they had 10. Yeah. Warsaw had eight. Hong Kong had eight. Mm. Tsinghua had eight. I think all these guys had eight. Yeah. Weifang okay. had five nodes. Five nodes, uh, two Teslas each, two P100s mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. So, Dan, I have a question. How did, the, how did they pick... How did the University of Warsaw get to China? I mean, how did, I can see how University of St. Petersburg, that's a, you know, I assume that's a Russian school. How did yes. they get, the, how did they get down selected or do they just show up with airplane oh, fares? No, no, no. That's a, that's a good backstory too. There were 230 teams that applied for the preliminaries. 230 applied to be in this, to be one of the 20. Wow. And in terms of the selection criteria, teams had to do a very involved uh, exercise that included running some code, evaluating code, uh, showing that they actually had the HPC chops to compete. It was not an easy process to make it through that prelim. Mm, yeah, yeah. Boy, that's a lot. Wow. Of, that's a lot of colleges doing. That Twitter uh, thirty. It's incredible. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. That's, that's uh, really a big, big success. Yeah. And, yeah. It's got to be a lot of work for the uh, organizing team and the oh, judges, yeah. right? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, and, and the f fact of the matter is if you've got these teams from outside, they were pretty, uh, I would say, pretty fair. I mean, yeah, of who yeah. they picked. So they picked a city college or they, yeah, they wanted thought they didn't have a chance. They picked the University of Warsaw. That's, you know, good for them, yeah, the yeah. judges, to be that open-minded and fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Dan, I saw some of your videos. It looked like you were struggling with some language barriers uh, trying to oh, interview yeah. these kids, right? And uh, yeah, uh, what is the official language of the competition? Are they are they speaking Mandarin? And I believe it's Mandarin, maybe Cantonese. I'm mm -hmm. not good enough to know the difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but basically, you bring whatever language you got. Yeah, yeah. So there is no official language. Are there uh, translators? They... I mean, yes. because Polish in Chinese probably don't translate, you know, they don't have a lot of those. Yeah. No, no. The Western teams all spoke pretty good English, mm -hmm. which was which was very helpful. Yeah. Uh, there are translators, there are student translators, and the difference between the student translators this year and last year and the year before, kind of night and day, but they were able to pull on a college at Wajong that had an entire college of English majors. Mm. And so that's who we're using as translators. Uh, this year, I think it was basically some engineering students who knew a bit of English. Mm. So, Dan, can you describe the setting for this? I'm trying to picture just 20 teams of kids well, and 20 booths, but there's no surrounding yeah. uh, HBC event, you know, like SC, no. is there? No, we're, we're in a very large room mm -hmm. that had, um, it was large enough to where they could have three columns of student teams or two columns of student teams uh, back to back. So four columns total, uh, five on each row, four rows of five, and still have room to walk around and have break rooms on either side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, the noise was something considerable oh. when you were in the right place in that room. So yeah. I had to do a lot of uh, work to make the videos um, you know, somewhat hearable. Okay. And, and how many people attend this? Uh, they each team had five members plus a judge. Okay, six so times twenty. Hundred twenty. Uh, and yeah. spectators? No real spectators, just the volunteers and the organizers plus the uh, application experts. 
Uh, so this isn't really a public event. Right. Yeah. And any Chinese media, like TV cameras? Oh, God. Kind of thing? Lots of it. Lots of lots that? Of yeah. TV oh, cool. Lots of that. Cool. Uh, lots of filming being done. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm beating my way through people to try and get up to see the scores, <laughs> things like that. Uh, let's hit the next slide, HPCG. Yeah. I am starting on a campaign to make HPCG a compulsory event, just like Linpack. Mm. Uh, I'm liking this. It who, puts who, a lot of stress who, on the... Who started adding HPCG to the this event, Dan? Was this you or somebody else? Uh, it wasn't me. It has been a mystery application before, yeah. and it was an application at last year's SC, and I think it should be compulsory. Um, it puts so much strain on the systems, and if you take a look at the chart on the uh, charts on the next page, uh, you'll see that there's quite a bit of difference between what the teams um, have done over the years, and there's quite a bit of difference between the average and the top, which tells me there's a hell of a lot of tunability in it. Mm. Okay. So it isn't just Whoever has the most GPUs wins for this particular. No. Okay. It, it was it was this year. If you look at We yeah, Fang, yeah, We Fang, it, but but uh, Northwest Polytechnical, Tsinghua, NTHU, they all had eight GPUs. But, but but Rich, yeah, they all had eight GPUs and they didn't win. So there's obviously some application tuning and other things going on in the background mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, because it's not linear scale between the average and the top in terms of GPU count. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. so that's my little crusade for the next one. Um, let's move on to the applications. Yeah. Um, they had Falcon as an application, um, which I think is molecular dynamics. Anybody know Falcon offhand? Do not. Do not. I thought lamps. I thought that lamps was computational chemistry, but I'm not positive. I'll put a I'll put a link in to these. Yeah, apps. put a link Falcon into it. and Saturn. Yeah, yeah, and Saturn. Like your dynamics for lamps. Yeah, lamps. yeah. And uh, Saturn or Saturn or however the hell you want to pronounce it, uh, that I know is fluid dynamics. Hmm. And take a look at the scores on those. Ching Hua schooled everybody on Falcon, and then Bei Hong, um, aeronautic, aeronautical. University schooled them right back on Saturn. Yeah. And the you know the low scores, they drop off really fast. So I have, a, I have a question, Dan. Yeah. You said you don't have the results for those. Is that because you don't know who the winner is, or what's what's going on with that? Uh, they don't disclose the the detailed results. Oh, I thought you were special, and they would tell you. I'm trying to be special and get them to tell me. Uh, maybe I have to be a judge for that. I don't know. But hmm. uh, the the whole thing about this, about scoring, is no one wants to hurt anybody's feelings. And oh, the really? Th the yeah. thing that, I wanted, that I'm trying to tell them is that if I get the scores, I'm only going to publish the top four or five anyway. Yeah. I'm not going to publish the bottom. And um, I sure as hell don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or anything. But I do want to have an archive of all these scores for historical purposes. Oh, I see. Well, they, yeah. they should get, well, ask them to give you the scores anonymized. Uh, that doesn't help me that much. Okay. Like well, if you're just looking at it from a historical basis, that's all you need, Dan. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it is, but it's but then from a publishing basis, it doesn't give me the top three or four to be able to shine some light on. And that's what I really like. Well, that's ask them to give the top three and anonymize the rest. That's worth it. Yeah, that'd be a win. Yeah. But but that's an awful lot. I mean, going into the competition, going into the those last results, I had an idea who was going to win, but I was way off on who I thought was going to be in second and third place. Yeah. So, so Dan, you spent a week out there, right? Uh, was this five days yeah. of... Uh, and then uh, they had... Five a, days of... A big, uh, big uh, awards. A big award ceremony? Yeah. Big award ceremony and a gala gala banquet afterwards. Mm -hmm. Jack Dongara was there. Oh yeah, as a judge, um, we hung out a little bit. Uh, got introduced to a new alcohol at the gala awards banquet, which they build as a combination of vodka and gin, but more powerful. <laughs> and they were they were right about that. Probably an undisclosed proof number that it has. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting at my um, 
my table with let me let me get the name so I get them correct with uh, Jack came over but Armin Kremers from mm-hmm. Germany and uh, Yasuo Matsumana Matsuyama from Japan yeah and we started working on this uh, this bottle mm-hmm. and we were toasting everything from the fish to beehive hairdos <laughs> and we got about 90 95 percent of the way through ours and we're uh-huh. feeling pretty good yeah however i talked to the team from russia yeah they petersburg which had two girls on it yes yeah I, I, they, they had killed their entire entire bottle about half an hour before yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it, what they're all what 20 years old maybe tops uh, 20 years old <laughs> they all weighed in at probably less than 150 <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, Great. yeah, that was something. Great. And Dan, mm. and this surprises you how? <laughs> it should. It shouldn't, <laughs> it shouldn't at all. It shouldn't at all. all right. I mean, uh, it's that's... a well-known, well-known <laughs> issue about that. That uh, has a high alcohol consumption country. Yeah, <laughs> they know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely know what they're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are the big takeaways from this uh, competition? Well, let's Dan. take a look at the overall winners. Okay. That's the next slide, and I believe the last slide. And uh, they gave out awards for application innovation for the people that optimize particular applications well. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see Northwest Polytechnical in there. It's nice to see Ural in there. It's their third time competing yeah. from Russia. Uh, haven't won anything. NTHU in Shanghai, perennial powers. They did well. Yeah. Uh, the overall winners, Tsinghua University, who has won a boatload of these mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bei Hong, uh, first time in for them. Both of those teams will be going to Germany for the ISC finals. Oh, okay. That's so they qualify for for that. Then. Yeah. Wow. Top two Chinese finishers uh, get into ISC. Tsinghua also won the E Prize, which is for working on uh, Mansum on the Sunway computer. Hmm. Can you imagine your training? Everything you know is Xeon. Now all of a sudden you're getting thrown a Sunway. Yeah, uh, a, a, a streaming processor that no one has touched, or you know, I mean, yeah, you probably can't even find an emulator for this thing. Anyway. I mean, these kids are among the I don't know, probably 500 people in the world that have used this system. Yeah. Maybe a thousand people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what I heard it was interesting. One of the coaches was telling me that that uh, Sunway processor reminds him a lot of the old Power uh, Cell broadband engine remember that All right oh yeah mm. the eight core yeah, the one that the... was used in uh Roadrunner. The playstation also right yeah, yeah it was playstation it didn't make it playstation so, as... yeah. yeah and road huh well yes but playstation yeah the playstation that processor didn't make it for a bunch of reasons yeah no and one of them is that it's hard to program right well, that you know and yeah. i wonder if that was the same if that's the same problem with sunway and I heard I, I what I heard was that the it was hard to program optimally, and the compiler needed you know a number more generations for code generation, and we were a long way off with some of the languages to be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's what I heard too. Um, so kudos to them for managing to tame that beast. And like we've discussed, We Fang took home both the Linpack and the HPCG uh, top scores. Nice yeah. Yeah. It was a good competition. They did a really good job of organizing it. Uh, I'd like to see more transparency on the scoring. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see one of the problems that all of the competitions face is that they all have a rule that you have to be an undergraduate. Oh, wow. Problem, problem is, I mean, that's fine for the U.S. That's fine for, for Asia. Problem is, is Europe. Europe gives out a degree after two years. Not it's, every part. Not every part, no. But many yeah. of the universities that oh, would like to compete is give out a degree after two years, which is the undergraduate degree. Then kids are going on for their masters. I okay. see. So they're not considered uh, undergrads anymore. And that's they uh, that's a problem. Yeah, I see that. That's a problem for them to assemble a team. So I've yeah. proposed a rule change that, that any student who's received uh, – Four years of under of a formal education or less should be allowed to compete. Why don't you just make it based on age? If you're younger than 22, you can show up. 
Yeah, but what, we've had a couple of old guys who've gone back to school later in life. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But then the way you do it, even high school is not the same everywhere. Uh, true, Some but they still, allow, they still allow high schoolers in. Hmm. In fact, I believe, yeah, we're going to see another high school at one of these competitions sometime, I'll bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. But, you know, the other thing this shows is that you look at the, the, the breadth of talent among all of these universities, and they're everywhere in the world. It's really a big message that, you know, the the, the talent is everywhere. It's yeah. not limited yeah. to, you know, Cambridge or Berlin or, you know, Boston or it's not so geographically concentrated anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So a, a good time was had by all. Well, great, Dan. Well, here we are. What are we like? Six weeks away from the next round in uh, Frankfurt. We are. Yeah. I'll be revealing the names of those students in a video probably eh, next week or the week after. Okay. Great job. Yeah. Good. And good. Always, always a good report here, Dan. Yeah, it's one of my favorite topics. Well, Dan, it is it is your favorite topic for sure. Okay, yeah, I would say that. Everybody needs <laughs> it's my favorite. favorite topic. Other than, and I don't know if I should disclose this publicly, mm. but our discussion about what we're going to try and do as a project together. Oh, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't discuss that publicly. Okay, okay, well, we'll not discuss that publicly until a later date. Not until we're world famous. Like well, until we, until we start on it, until we actually <laughs> okay. have some stuff in hand. Okay, all right. Until it becomes a... <laughs> just, no, that until, no, Dan, until we're ready to submit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich, just that yeah, will make us well famous. The process will be put in the talk. <laughs> just mentioning we're going to do something is going to make us <laughs> It's like, famous. well, this is a major announcement. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a major announcement. Hold on to your hats. <laughs> On thanks that for mysterious note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for your report from ASC 17 in Wushi. And uh, Wushi. Wushi. Do you have a catch? Anybody have a catch? Um, the catch of the week has got to be the Google thing. Oh, the uh, the Google Docs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What happened? I was out of town. It's a security worm. Uh, yeah. Henry knows more about. It. Yeah. What's up, Henry? Uh, it was a worm that came in, and actually, it grabs email addresses from people you know. And I got an email address from someone I know, at a government agency that uh, uses uh, the Google Cloud for their mail. And I clicked on it, but luckily, Google had shut it down uh, before I did anything. Because it looked a little weird, but I got an email from this guy before, and he sent me a document. Yeah. It was oh, very wow. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it it looks innocuous. It says some your your friend is, wants to share this document with you, right? And it's somebody right. you know. And it it basically, as you click through, it says uh, it needs permission to read your email or something. And oh, that oh. gives it full actually, access. I actually, I don't use Google for anything. Luckily. Yeah, yeah. I and just I, use and it for I did search. change my password and went to two factor authentication for everything. Too. Yeah, way to do it. Yeah, nice. So nice. I got one too. Then, so uh, as as we research about artificial intelligence, it turns out that court systems around the country are increasingly using AI assists. Hmm, really? Do, they're doing it to assess the risk associated with the defendant. Oh. So if the computer application says, you know, this guy is likely to uh, escape, or you know, it it, it kind of causes the judge to say here's the bail amount instead of whatever they were going to do or uh and and i think in one case uh, the person got sentenced oh uh, wow and of course they say under what uh you know for what reason and 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 these ai algorithms are not really known they don't really know how the deep learning black box is working right now some companies say it's trade secret, which may just be another way of saying we have no clue. Mm. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but but maybe they do, and it really is a trade secret. So basically, unknown or secret algorithms are kind of making, you know, so I call this computer-aided justice, and it's uh, something that's coming, and it's, uh, it's, wow. it's, it's a big issue. Yeah, I mean, especially... That is going to be an... Who? Yeah, with this black box where you don't really know what logic it came to its conclusion... You don't know if there's racial profiling inside that box. You have mm -hmm. no idea, 
right? Well, uh, you know, the New York Times covered this, Wired covered this. They, uh, one of them gave a really nice analysis, an analogy mm -hmm. that when you use GPS, they were saying that there's a part of the Ozarks and the truckers that have been around there know to avoid a particular road, which looks faster, but it's got like a pretty dramatic drop. Mm. Uh, okay. And a couple of sharp turns. And, you know, if you're a heavy truck, you don't want to go there. Yeah. Uh, but the GPS system has no clue. Mm -hmm. So as truckers okay. increasingly use GPS, the number of traffic accidents on that road has increased yeah. because ah. these systems only know about what you program into them. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a really big area, and it's interesting that the legal profession really needs to regulate itself before it's regulating anybody else. Interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. My catch is a little little lighter hearted, but it, Henry mm. mentioned uh, two factor authentication, mm. and that sparked my my memory. And um, when I was over in China, I had terrible net access from mm. the center, from the because uh, we had every kid there trying to download all of their tools and stuff, but also I had terrible net access in the hotel. One of the things that I needed to do is to, in order to to submit my register articles to the register, I have to go through a two-factor ID that uses my cell phone to give me a code. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Problem is, I get I get caught in a vicious circle because it's not getting my code back quickly enough until the damn code changes again. <laughs> and so I enter a code, hit hit uh, return. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. I look at my phone. The code's changed again. <laughs> I entered a new code. It's telling me unauthorized. It's the slow boat to China that it, yeah, the packet I ended was up on. That about ten times. <laughs> it gave me an idea for a fun thing. Is if uh, I had a lot of money, I would make a two-factor authorization company and build that out and sell it extremely inexpensively, but have that authentication number change every five, ten seconds. I think that would be hysterical. Oh, just very would frustrating. Be, would, <laughs> would be hysterical? You, you it would make just, me laugh very well, much. Yeah, you would just take pleasure in people's frustration. I could see that. Totally. And it'd be, I, it'd be nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be very secure. Okay, well, my catch of the week refers back to that MSST conference that's coming up. Um, oh, yeah. Our friends from Backblaze are going to do another uh, presentation of their disk drive study. You know, they use lots of hard drives there, uh, cheap consumer drives from what I understand, and like oh, in the God. tens of thousands, and they like this, to come out every year and show how they've held up. Um, this is going to make Henry foam at the mouth. <laughs> Henry he foams at the mouth anyway. <laughs> he hates the idea of using consumer uh, drives I do on important applications. That is, that is correct. I do yeah. hate it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but that's coming up, and uh, MSST is, jeez, Henry, that's only like two weeks away. Two think, weeks no? away. Yeah, yeah, in uh, Santa Clara, so that's my catch of the week. Excellent. That's great. Well, this has been a meaty program. Okay, on that content-heavy note, uh, we will say goodbye and welcome you back next time for our next edition of Radio Free HPC. Stay tuned. That's it for this edition of Radio Free HPC. Thank you for listening, and be sure to check back often for new episodes. Also, check out our website for more content links and a place for you to let us know what you think about the show. We're at RadioFreeHPC.com. Thanks again. We'll be back with another exciting episode real soon. <laughs>